Hi there. In this video, we're going to do a rebuttal to a recent article in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution by Wes Moss called The Can't Lose Annuity Trap. Now before we begin, I want to personally say that we have a lot of respect for Wes Moss. We've been following him for a while. He's here in Atlanta, my hometown where I live. I like the guy. He's incredibly intelligent, does really, really good work for his clients. And he puts great content out there. He's got some excellent books, and we encourage you to follow his stuff. So this is not about bashing Wes or his company by any means, but anytime that we see an article like this, and I believe I know why Wes wrote it, I think he was a little bit agitated with some misleading marketing tactics he saw out there about indexed annuities, but this was so one-sided and in some points even misleading about index annuities that we had to correct this. So Wes, this is nothing against you. We just, we, our job is to tell the truth out there about annuities, both good and bad. And I will also state that index annuities are horrible for some people. They truly are bad deals for some people. On the other hand, they're incredible deals for other people, just like stocks or bonds or mutual funds or any, any kind of investment or retirement vehicle out there. It can't be a fit for everyone, but it can be a fit for some. So let's go over some of the points in here on this article, once again called The Can't Lose Annuity Trap by Wes Moss. So in the very beginning, he talks about what I believe probably triggered this very negative article. He talks about something he heard on the radio and that there's some either advisors or insurance agents out there talking about these can't lose investments, which of course these index annuities. Now to begin, Index annuities, just so you know, are not investments, meaning they're not classified as securities. Variable annuities are. That means you have to have a securities license to sell them. Fixed index annuities and fixed annuities and multi-year guarantees and immediate annuities, they're all really considered insurance products, meaning they're not investments. And I don't know if you just use that term uh, you know, blunt, bluntly or if you really meant it, just big picture that people are investing money into them. But either way, they're, they're not investments. So I want to I wanna talk about that real quick and make sure that everyone understands what index annuities are and what they aren't. Now, he also talks about that they have 10 to 15 years of surrender penalties, meaning that if you put your money in an index annuity, that you're going to be stuck for 10 or 15 years. Now, it's a little bit misleading because I don't know, it, at least in like our state and here in Georgia and Florida where, where my brother is and we have an office, you can't even have an annuity over 10 years in the state of Florida and California, Texas, Pennsylvania, some of the really big annuity states out there where there are a lot of baby boomers and seniors. You can't even have one over 10 years. There, there is one 15-year annuity that we know of. That's only one. And out of the, you know, I don't know how many hundreds of different index annuities, most of them in that seven to 10 year range. So once again, just a little bit misleading there. He could have just said they are 10 years, uh, you know, and surrender, big surrender, surrender penalties can apply. That part is true. But once again, Wes, we want to talk about the good and the bad, meaning the, the pros and cons. Big surrender, surrender penalties do apply day one after a certain amount of time, seven years, 10 years, it obviously goes down in a de decreasing pattern, meaning if the surrender charge is 10% in the first year, it might be nine in year two, and then eight and all the way down to, to zero, of course, in year 11. So it's, it's just important to point that stuff out where people don't, aren't gonna think they have huge surrender penalties in any time. And let's talk about these surrender penalties real quick. This is a contract, people. When you get into a fixed index annuity, you have a contract, just like you do on your home and your mortgage, or if you do a car, a car loan or a lease or a cell phone plan, it's a contract. And these insurance carriers do have a lot of upfront expenses. They do have to pay the, the advisor or the insurance agent some commission. They have to buy the options. It costs them a lot of money that first year. And personally, I want them to stay in business, meaning I don't want there ever to be a chance for a big run on the bank where people can just take all their money and run. And just like if you walked away from your home or walked away from your car lease or canceled your cell phone um, contract, you're going to have a penalty. So it's the same thing here. You just have to know what you're getting in. They can't legally change it once you're in. So everything you're signing up front should not come as a surprise if later down the road you decide to get out. But this is incredibly important. I'm glad Wes mentioned it because that is a negative to index annuity. Some of them have really high surrender charges. So be very careful what you get in. Know exactly what you have before you sign it. And sometimes this can be a good thing. For instance, I personally at age 35, I own a fixed index annuity, if you can believe that. I did it for a specific reason on some specific qualified money that I have because I believed in, in, in what these can do and I've seen what they can do over the years. I know a lot of people who bought these fixed index annuities from 2004 to 2007. And guess what? They did not lose a single penny in their fixed index annuity, not a single dime. 
in 2008, 2009 when everyone else was losing their butt and probably a lot of their other investments were losing lots of money, if not half of their money. So these can be a fit and there are a lot of people out there who are incredibly happy with their index annuity, including myself. I'll also point out there's like 35 billion of, of dollars that went into fixed index annuities last year alone and there's always been less than 1%. It's a fraction of 1% of people ever complain or file lawsuits or anything like that. So this is not something where half the people are ticked off and, uh, and these are people are getting hosed by them. I mean, these are all issued, as Wes points out, by very large insurance carriers who most of them have been around for 10, 20, 30, even 100 plus years and have always stuck behind their promises. So this is not something that people are getting ripped off uh, all, all the time or ever for that matter, but it is a contract. And if you do leave early, as Wes points out, you are going to get penalized. Now, really the biggest point I wanna make on this, Wes keeps talking about uh, the fact that they're bad investments. And, and that's probably because someone mentioned that on the radio show. But he talks about how he compares uh, the last 25 years that this, these, some of these index annuities would have done 2.5%. And he talks about some other options, maybe government bonds or something else that could have been better, or even putting it in the S&P 500 or some other government bond fund would have done better than this. And we agree. This is an incredibly powerful point, and probably the, the most crucial point in this entire video is to understand that index annuities, as I mentioned, are not investments. You need to buy them for the right reason. To me, personally, the right reason is for lifetime income. That's the reason you should be buying an index annuity. If you're trying to chase a return, this is not the fit for you. And maybe that was what Wes was trying to say, but he said it in a very one-sided manner. Index annuities are really for contractual lifetime income. That's what the insurance carrier can provide that the S&P can't and that most of your 401ks can't. It's basically creating your own little pension plan. If you're buying it once again for pie in the sky, five, six, seven, eight percent returns, then do run. I agree with Wes wholeheartedly. Run away as fast as you can. It's not a good deal. Our friend Stan the Annuity Man, he wrote a book recently called The uh, Annuity Stanifesto, and he said, and then I'm gonna quote this, he says, buy annuities for what they will do, not what they might do. And what he means by that is buy annuities for what they will contractually guarantee to do, which is create some kind of lifetime income stream. Don't buy them for what they might do. Don't believe the people on the radio that are talking about seven, eight percent returns that you can walk away with. There are some seven and eight percent income riders. That's a whole separate bucket. You cannot walk away with that money ever. There, there's not a chance you're ever gonna walk away with that. If you could, everyone and their, and their brother would be putting all their money into something like that if you could get a 7% guarantee. It's not out there. So there are not any kind of guaranteed investments as Wes pointed out. So we do wanna talk about some of the good stuff. Now he also talks about the 87% of your money and I, I encourage you to read the article and we're gonna have a full rebuttal in, uh, in print as well that you can read. But he talks about annuities are only required by regulation to return 87.5% of your money, not the full 100%. It's very misleading. There are some underlying guarantees, and quite frankly, that's how these insurance carriers are able to classify these as insurance products, as fixed annuities and not investments, because they do have a structured, specified, fixed growth rate every single year that you own it. And a lot of them do start at 87.5 and they compound it some, some return. But that has nothing to do with what they're required to give you back or, um, or, or what your return is gonna be. And in fact, index annuities have been around for approximately 20 years, and all of them have had to have some kind of minimum guarantee like this, and I have not seen one yet, and I, we see a lot of people send us statements and things like that, we have not come across one yet where this actually came into play. So it's almost like a backup Think of you're a, a, a circus up on a on a, a tightrope. It's basically like a backup backup net. It's at the very very bottom. Saying the worst 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 case scenario is you get 87.5 percent of your money compounding at a specified rate, and most of the time it ends up equaling 100 and something percent of your money. It has to be over 100 percent. So that was why it's a little bit misleading. If you stick in the plan, that is the whole time, it will be over 100 uh, percent, and that's your worst worst absolute worst case scenario. Assuming the market just goes down for 10 years straight. And if that's the case, if the market goes down for 10 years straight without a single gain, and you're getting your money back plus a little bit of interest, you better be pretty dog on happy. So once again, you can understand why this has never actually happened that I know of. Once again in this, he talks a little bit and compares these fixed index annuities to the S&P and government bonds. It's just inappropriate. It, that's not what these are made for. Once again, most people, and I think how they should be sold, and this is our opinion at Annuity Think Tank, is for the income, buying for the contractual guarantees. As Stan the Annuity Man says, buy annuities for what they will do, not what they might do. 
Then at the very end, he throws another little kind of low blow, talks about, you know, will the company be around to, to live up to his guarantees? As we mentioned, index annuities have been around for 20 years. We've had a couple really bad corrections during those 20 years. <clears throat> We've also even had uh, about 400 and something banks completely fail and go bankrupt and have to get bailed out. There has not been any insurance carriers in that time frame that have not lived up to their promises. Everyone talks about AIG, but even the AIG insurance side of the business was incredibly profitable and not a single person lost anything in an annuity or did not get what they were promised. So as long as these have been around, not a single thing has gone wrong, yet a lot of people have lost money in stocks and mutual funds and other stuff. And I'm not bashing those by any means or trying to give investment advice here, but I'm saying don't, don't just make a decision be, because of upsides and, and downsides. Do it for what it can do. Buy it with a really solid company. So he does make a good point here. Buy it with one who has been around, who has weathered some tough times, because that is incredibly important. I would not put my money with a company that just started up last year. That would be pretty risky. But overall, <clears throat> Wes, it was a little bit one-sided, but he did bring up some good points that there are pros and cons to all these index annuities, just like Dave Ramsey and Clark Howard pointed out. And just like we point out, there is no one-size-fits-all perfect annuity. There never will be. And if anyone does tell you that there is, run for the mountains, as Wes said. And if they ever tell you that you're, you are going to get five, six, seven percent and you can walk away with that in any index annuity, definitely do run. We back up Wes 100 percent there. And be very, very careful. A lot of it's just educating yourself. And, and, and for people like Wes, our advice is, you know, just try to give them a little bit more, less one side and a little bit more of the pros and cons, because that's what we try to do. You know, index annuities can really be a nightmare for people, but they can also be the best thing ever. And the people that bought them in 04 to 07, incredibly happy. So hope that helps. We are going to have a, a longer version as well uh, written. If you want to read that, just go down below and uh, you'll see it here in the YouTube description.